dreamer's life. Yo, what's going on guys? ADL here once again with A Dreamer's Life Podcast and this is the seventh episode. Thank you guys for tuning in and I am here with my friend with Milwaukee's own co founder and creator of Love Your Curls and Laugh With Me Productions, Talithia Lebron. Thank you. Thank you. Going on. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for uh, thank you for stopping by, man. What's going on? No Tell the people a little bit about yourself. Whew. So much to tell you, <laughs> Lord. Um, so um, I've been in Milwaukee for about sixteen years. I came over here when my son was one, so right now he's seventeen. He's a grown man. Oh. Yes, and I came here from uh, the Bronx. Uh, and it's the not Bronx. The same, the same spot well, I'm from Brooklyn. 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 Okay, yeah. yeah Brooklyn. So we got a we got a New York yeah. in here. Uh, New yes. York, very, very New York, New York Um <clears throat> So I ended up coming over here because family um, came here about uh, let's say forty years ago from Puerto Rico, and um, they came over here for the warehouse jobs. So <coughs> that's me. why <coughs> I have family here. That I did never, I never met. I, I, okay, I was okay. like, who are these people? I don't know, right? So it, they all came from my father, my my uh, grandfather's side. So my grandfather came from Puerto Rico, and then a lot of people went to New York. A lot of people went to Florida. So um, then my grandpa, he went out to New York and. He made my mother and a bunch of other kids, and okay, okay. then I was the first grandchild, and then he ended up saying, you know what, let me leave New York, because gentrification is a big deal out there, and things started getting really tough, and so he came to Wisconsin, and then he, moving fast forward, family left New York, because it got harder, and yeah. then Talitha stayed behind, because yeah. <laughs> I was doing well, and I was like, where the hell is Wisconsin, I don't even know what that right, is. Right, yeah, like, everybody. I, I thought that was like a, a city, I don't know. Man, <laughs> when I went to Puerto Rico right. from Wisconsin, yeah. they were flaming me, because yeah. they said all there was here is cheese and cow right, and corn. Right, right, right. And they weren't lying, there's right. a lot of cheese, cows, and corn in Wisconsin. Right, so when I got into trouble, um, okay, when I say okay. trouble, single parenting. You know, okay, yeah. A, it's not an easy thing. That can so, be very, very difficult. Yes, yes. I, I went through some really hard times in New York by myself. So, because um, I had no family, everybody ended up leaving. And honestly, New York is not a good place to be in no. in bad terms. No. With, yeah. No, so I tried it for a year. Me and I tried it for a year. And I was dying. It was horrible. So, mm -hmm. um, my mother was already established out here. And uh, she said, Mommy, come over here, you know. Um, we have everything set up for you. You can live with us until you're ready and do your own thing. And um, I was I was living well um, before I got pregnant, but when I when I had my son, it, like I said, everything started getting into arrears, and I just said, you know what, I gotta li leave for him. Cause okay. Just we, a, a better a better life. It was just a better everything for him. All right. And I had to just do a big adjustment. And did you move uh, directly to Milwaukee or did you move like to a city around Milwaukee? No, I went to uh, South Milwaukee. Okay, so you, no yeah, tea. no. All the people with no tea. See, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's still, but it's still um, a better area than yeah. Milwaukee, the yeah. city. So right. you went from, from New York, from the Bronx where it's really rough to a more way milder right. area because yeah. South Milwaukee is more it's more chill. Now, if you would have came to Milwaukee, like the south side of Milwaukee, the north side of Milwaukee, right. then it would have been a little more right. like, well, you went from from, from bad what? to bad. You know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> well, to be honest with you, I actually like the south side better. Yeah. So well, I yeah, because the, 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 Latino, the yeah. Latino community, of course, you know, we, and we're Latinos. We love being around our people. You <laughs> know what I mean? So... I ended up leaving South Milwaukee um, when I got my stuff together. I said, thanks, Mom. Thanks for allowing me to stay for a year. Okay. I love my mom, but she got me fat. Oh, <laughs> I man. was like, I got to go. Uh, <laughs> so I, I gained 20 pounds because I, I, I lost I them, thank God. But I had to leave. I said, mom's, like, well, <laughs> mom's be cooking great, man. Like I, and Right now, yeah. my mom's on vacation over here. Yeah. Like, man, I have her here at home. She's going to be cooking for me every day. Well, she right. better. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> so when I came on here, um, I just said, you know, I ended up getting a job, a good job, and then um, just did what I needed to do to raise my son. But I have, like, this burning entrepreneur in me, and um, my job was good. You know, it was good to me. Everybody's good to me. 
but um, there's there's talents that we always have that if we're not doing anything with them, mm -hmm. they just fester, and you start thinking like, man, I wish I could do this. I wish I didn't have this situation. I wish I had the money to do this. Yeah, and it, becomes this yeah. it becomes this like sickness, you know? And uh, I started getting really sad and depressed over it. And I'm just like, you know, I'm giving up everything to be a single parent. And I love my son and everything, but I don't believe that you have to be that sacrificial to the point where you just lose yourself. So I had to dig deep. And so... Um, I did everything I needed to do to get to where I'm at. That started about like four years ago. I said, you know what, I'm done. I, I, I gotta do something. This is eating me alive. And one, oh, yeah. of, the, one of the things that um, <clears throat> I started doing, um, ever since a little girl, I've always been a, a c comedy actress. Comedy is, is always and will always be my first love. All right, all right. So I was one of those people that when everybody got together, I would go in the back and dress up and then come perform and I'll be like everybody's down or sad or whatever and I'll come out dressed like James Brown or like <laughs> Fire <laughs> Marshall Bill I would do all those things I see, from I see the James Collar. Brown I see it I did all of that stuff and it was embedded in me since younger mm. and my auntie and I have uh, conversations about it how I used to do this and I used to do that I used to always have the family laughing all the time and um even down to like commercials, how I can make commercials funny. Like I was thinking like that at 11. I remember those things. So um, like Jim Carrey has been such a big inspiration that's, that's for me. That's my favorite. Yeah, like, I, I, like I'm my obsessed biggest, with him. Well, my, yeah. my, favorite, my favorite I'd say is Felipe Esparza. Yeah. Like, but like my, mm -hmm. my inspiration, the, yeah. the one that I was like, man, he's so hilarious. The first one that I saw that I wanted, I was like, I want to be like that guy mm -hmm. was Jim Carrey. I, I love that guy. So I used to practice... Um, Fire my Chevelle and I'll do it for you now. Are you ready? Yeah. Right. <laughs> they gonna mess up my lipstick. Um, I was like, ha <laughs> See? <laughs> See? <laughs> you see? So, it's people are not, <laughs> people are not ready, you know? Oh, and I yeah. love it because people see me one way and they think something totally different. And I really love the shock factor. Okay. Yeah. Like, I thrive off of that. So, um, I said, you know what? Um, I would be comical at work. Um, I'm comical with my friends. And I said, you know, let me start doing shows at my house. So, I started doing stuff in my backyard. Because I bought a house. Okay. okay and yeah. then I said, you know what? Let me Congratulations. Do Congratulations. Thank you. I started doing stuff in my backyard. What um, do you mean? What do you mean by stuff like Like a stand-up. Like I said, no, I'll just invite people that I knew. Like your friends, friends. Like, yeah, friends, right. and then they started bringing people, and it was just a close net of Are people. Are you serious? Just like yeah, in your yeah. own home? And this is in Milwaukee. I live on 26. That's awesome. That's yeah, so freaking I said, awesome. I said, you know what, let me just do something. You know, you everybody has this this image of you have to have everything to do something, and it's not true. You have to start somewhere. I, I really, hang on, I'm really yeah. interested in that, yeah. actually. that. Yeah. So you didn't get embarrassed or anything at all? No. Nope. You just told them, like, hey, um, you just put a couple people together. Yeah. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm going to be doing this. I want to try some shit. Can y'all come over? Can you support me? Like, I need to get this out because I'm a damn goofball and I need to figure I mean, shit out. Like, like, you know, like, get in the bag, shut the fuck up, <laughs> sit down. Sometimes, sometimes I, yeah. um, like, I lose my friends, like, um, I'm telling them a joke and they just drift off like I'm like is the joke not funny or, right. like, it was really funny no but, <laughs> but see family so how the hell do you get them learned, like what I learned is family and friends is not the audience you need they're so used to you so I say that worked for a little while but then I said you know what I'm gonna start traveling to do this with a raw crowd they don't know me if I do bad, I said, hold on, right? They never yeah, knew yeah, me, yeah. True, right? True, true, yeah. And I said, I'm not going to have stuff recorded because I honestly couldn't get anything recorded because no one knew me there. Oh, and I wasn't going to say, like, hey, get my, here's right, my right, phone here's record my record, me. Yeah. But I just wanted the practice. So what I started doing was doing open mics when I went on vacations. So I would find places and Jimmy, I just threw myself on the stage Her, and, uh, yo, in Atlanta, in Atlanta, in Atlanta, I'm going to tell you how I did this in Atlanta to almost 300, <laughs> almost 300 people, I'm going to show you how I did this. 
So um, this is where confidence plays in. So uh, I went to a really big uh, club and uh, I didn't know that they had open mic the next night. So I seen a little card on the table and I was just like, you know, we were just talking. I picked up the drink and I saw the, the flyer and I was like, oh shit, they're going to have comedy night tomorrow. I told my friend I'll be back. She was like, bitch, where you going? I was like, I'll be back. So I found, I found a waitress and I said, who's the owner? And she pointed and I went up to him and I said, yo, I'm a local, com I'm a comedian in town. I see that you got an open mic tomorrow. I would love to come and, you know, give me five minutes. He was like, cool, come tomorrow, 8 o'clock, done. And I was like, oh, that shit, was the this first is really time. happening. This is my first time. This is my first time. This is like three years ago. It was like three, three years ago. So I went over there, and um, I didn't know Ricky Smiley was the one hosting oh, yeah. all that stuff. I didn't know. So um, it was pretty cool. And so I went on stage, and I did my thing, and people, four people came up to me and said, that was so funny. But I, I learned a lot because my friend recorded me during that time okay, okay. so it was it was practice for me to see like okay what I did wrong how I can fix it was I 100% comfortable like you know I what I mean but did you have jokes written already I had I was stuff the, I already the day before no I had I had I'm always oh writing. you've always written I'm jokes always and stuff writing stuff I'm okay always that's how I stuff. Yeah. yeah I always wrote so I'm always writing time. stuff or have topics you know and um the the that night prior I uh just said, okay, I'm up to this, do this, and do that. Five minutes, you just need two topics. You're done. I mean, you can even just do one. You really don't need much. You okay. can stretch five minutes out. Yeah. So I was like, um, so that's exactly what I did. I talked about two different things, and I tested some stuff out. I didn't give a fuck. I really, I honestly don't care. Like, I have no fear factor on stage. I realized that when I went on stage, and, um, <laughs> And when I got off stage, I was like, this is what I need to be doing. Oh. Like that feeling of adrenaline and just like being able to do I it. And it was like all these people. It was like 300 people. And I was just I, like, whoa. And and I saw all these comics like waiting for their spot. And they had to fight for their spot. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I had to also, as well. But I did get some favor. Mm -hmm. I know I could definitely see how I got some favor. How? I mean, because, well, because you're from out of town. And you went I, the day I before. Knew, yeah. And, I, and I'm, um, I don't know. I just feel like it was a little too easy for me to get on stage. Okay, and I okay, think it's okay, because okay. either the way I approached or he, you know, I don't know, me yeah, being girl, a female. Too, probably, yeah. I don't know. They didn't have a lot of female. Mm -mm. That's probably why. That's probably too. why. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that probably helps So too. from then on, three years ago, my job was already doing stuff in my backyard. Oh. Um, so then after a year of doing that in my backyard, I said, I got to go in front of a raw crowd. Okay. And so I started doing that. For the last three years, just throwing myself in open mics. And where are you go here in open mics? Uh, usually it's Atlanta. I go back there a lot. People, okay, okay, a lot okay. Of, I like a lot of places that I've gone out there, so I know some people now there. So I have some stuff established. Oh, that's, that's cool. pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, New York, I um, did once in Madison, and then uh, I stayed away from Milwaukee. Because I didn't want to know anybody. Why? Yeah, Why? I just did. I needed to test it out. I, I needed to test it out, and I didn't. I wasn't one hundred percent confident yet, to the point where I was gonna be like, I'm. I was like, it's something about being home, where people that are closest to you are the most critical. Yeah. And it's like I don't want no negativity. Nobody telling me what are you doing. You know, I don't want to hear it. So. I just said I'm gonna do it, and I'll bring my stuff to Milwaukee when I'm when I fucking feel like it. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was like, so when I'm ready. Are you? Are you've been already ready to? Oh, Milwaukee, I've been right? ready. Been... I've been ready, but. But I've... have you already performed in Milwaukee at no, all? No, no. This is gonna. This show that I'm doing oh. in March 6 is my first time. On uh, March 6, where's it gonna be? It's gonna be at Zocolo. So, at Zocolo. Yeah, Zocolo. And where's Zocolo March, located March at? March 6. Um, it's six in um. Six and Piers. No. Right? Oh my God. No, it's Six and National. Six and Piers. That's not. Yes. I mean, it's on Six and Piers. It's one yeah, street after right. National. He's right. He's right. He's right. Yeah. So, um. Hey, all right. So, um, hang on. Hang on. What's the name of the, of the, of the event? Okay. So, um, 
so because of my comedy, I started this thing called uh, Laugh For Me Productions. And what it does is it'll support local comedians that want a spot because when I was on the road, it was very hard for me to get spots. Okay. Um, there was times where I didn't get a spot and there was times I did get a spot and I had to like, you know, basically kiss ass to get, you know, um, mm -hmm. five minutes. And I was like, I can do way more than five minutes and it's so frustrating, you know? So I was just like, um, well, since people are giving me a hard time, I feel like I'm too old to be wasting time. Oh. So I'm going to create a table for myself, a seat at the table for myself where uh, I start Laugh With Me Productions, find somewhere where they need promotion. Uh -huh. And then if they're already doing events, create a comedy event. And then that'll bring promotion to the club or the lounge or the restaurant, wherever it is. And then um, I'll go out and recruit comedians that you know, either just started or they've been doing it for a while and just want a different crowd. And then I was thinking about the market on the South Side. I was like, there's there's nothing here on the South Side that supports us as Latinos. Correct. And then there's no female comics. I can't find one for the life Correct. of me. I'm Correct. the only one for right now that I know of. Um, in the area. In the yeah. area. Um, and then, um, you know, we want comedy that's um, directed to us, you know, that's right, relatable yeah. to us. Right. So, um, I think my comedy is very, it could be very raunchy. <laughs> it could be, it's very, it's very relatable. I can talk about almost anything, but it's really related to the things that have happened in my life. Mm -hmm. And then I make a funny spin to it because I know a lot of people can relate to it. So I'm definitely a storyteller with punchlines. Okay. Yeah, I'm. Um, I like I like the whole storytelling. Yeah. So and it comes from a real place. And when I was on the road, I used to, I used to try to compare myself to other comedians and, you know, study all these comedians and what I learned and what I want to tell uh, future comedians um, or current comedians is that when you're figuring this out, mm -hmm. when you're writing. Try not to think about how other people do stuff. You can learn from them, but you gotta find your own niche. Yeah, you that's, gotta you gotta find that's your own honestly, niche. That's the hard part. Yeah, so I I honestly believe I found my niche because I have all you're gonna see is Talithi on the stage. You're not gonna <laughs> see nobody else. Right, and right. you like me, you like me, you don't, you don't. And you know, so another thing I learned about being on the road is um uh everybody's not gonna find you funny. And yeah, of course, okay. of course. And so, you know, you got to allow yourself to have the people that like you and that don't like you. Doesn't you have you don't take it personal. Yeah. Cuz everybody you there's so many um successful co comedians. Does everybody like every comedian? No. no, but they have a large following. So you 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 stand uh, strong on the things that you believe in, your comedy, your niche, your personality, who you are, what you like. And then um, you you don't break that for nobody, because you're you're this talent is yours and you cultivate it the way you feel you need to. So I'm super excited and super proud of myself that I took. I said you know I said hola. Yeah. You know I was like <laughs> this is something that has been uh, inside me forever. So why am I sitting on it? We become robots, you know. Doing so work, three, work, so work, basically, work, three work. years ago is when you oh, really found out. Four. four years ago yeah, is when you really four. found out that this is what I want to do. Um, this I've is always my thing. known it. I've always known it. It's like it's, me and my like me and my but cousin. But I just really did something about it. Is like, what I'm saying. Me it's, and my cousin, yeah. we always said that we wanted mm -hmm. to do it. Yeah, I mean, but he still hasn't done it. I bet I yeah. did it this. You know, um, when was it? Last year, the year mm -hmm. before. You know, I barely got started with it. So it's mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? We said that we wanted to do it. That's what right. we wanted to do. But we didn't really, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So this is, you found out, like, this is what I want to do. This yeah, is so when, I, like I said, when, I've always known from a little girl. Like, I, I can see myself on Mad TV. I can see okay. myself on Living Color. Who's the first see all comedian, that? like, a uh, stand-up comedian that you really, like... Gravitated to? That just has me in stitches all the time? Or, or that, um, or that you can relate yourself to. Relate? Like that kind of uh, a little bit of inspiration besides you know like as jim carrey he did his thing on uh in living color and right. you know his movies and whatnot you don't find a lot of stand-up comedy 
uh, a Jim Carrey stand-up comedy. But to, to be honest with you, Jim Carrey was a big inspiration for me because he pulls out the actress, actress in me, the comedian. Okay, 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 okay. Like the so at the, okay. I like skits and So at the end like of the day, that. that's what you'd like to go for? That's what you'd like to go for, more like on the on that side, like uh, on the yeah. acting, like that, or, or more on the stand up with the microphone, you know, saying I can, jokes. I can do both. I can do both. So, yeah. Okay. So it's going to be, I'm going to give a little bit of both on uh, March 6th. Okay, okay. So March 6th is uh, a Friday. Okay. And then Zocalo is going to have comedy nights um, every first Friday of every month. So I'm going to. Keep doing it to see how it is. It, so it's, is it an open mic or what's the event called? Um, like the name of the actual event. Right now it's called Laugh Out Loud, but we might change the, the caption every uh, month. It all depends. We're okay, just okay, okay. So for this right month now. it's ca uh, Laugh, Laugh Out Loud at yeah. Socalo on yeah. Six and Pierce yeah. on March 6th. Six. At yeah. what time? From 9 to 11. 9 to 11. From 9 to 11. So it's going to be... Um, they're gonna be there chilling, um, uh, and then they have a tavern. Okay. Um, so the garage area is where we're gonna have the comedy night at, and then we already have people that are set up to be on the line, uh, the lineup, and you're one of them. Yes. I will be there. So yes. if you guys do like and enjoy dark comedy, go out. If you guys do not, then please don't go out. <laughs> please don't go out with that one, man, because, man. So woo. you can go on Zocalo's page. and then no, good a, stuff, good stuff. There's a link on there to, um, so that you can have your ticket. Um, okay, so they got to buy tickets online? Um, well, there's a link on my Laugh With Me Productions um, Facebook page, and then on Zocalo, they're promoting it weekly. So there's a link to uh, get a ticket. Yeah, so okay. you do need a ticket. Okay, okay, um, right. So they're going to have the taco truck out, um, yeah, music. I'm going to bring cake because I'm going I'm to celebrate, you know, ah, my birthday. Nice, nice, nice. Um, That's awesome. And so I just want to, you know... And all the funny people come out. Life is stressful. Just come out, come out, guys! If yeah. you guys, if you guys want to be in there, yeah. um, in in the lineup in yeah. the future, you know, for mm -hmm. future events, come out that night. You know, speak yeah. to her. You know, mm -hmm. uh, get to know her. Get to know the other comics that are gonna be there. And yeah. you know, I mean, you could work on something for hey for next mm -hmm. month. You could yes. be on there. I want to help people um, have that opportunity. You know, um, it's not easy. You know, the way I did it was super risky. You know, and you know, you have to be super courageous and. Some people don't want um, to do that, you know, they want to do it local. So, um, if you want to have the opportunity to know, have a, have a platform with no pressure, I'm definitely the person that you need to talk to because um, I really want to encourage you. Um, when I when I was out on the road, I didn't get the encouragement. Okay. You know, I feel like we need to support each other. Everybody needs to have um, a support system. Definitely. And um, in the comedy world, uh, stand up. It really there's really nothing out there, not that I know of. Um, and you know, being a female comedian, it's like rah, rah, everybody's just you know. I don't know. It's just that I want to eliminate the cattiness or like the non-support. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, it makes yeah. sense. Um, the thing is that this is a cruel, um, this is a cruel, like, how do you say it? World. And, and, and the comedy, the comedy world. It's like. Yeah. But at least in Milwaukee, people can have a support system. And if I grow it enough, we'll have, um, we can start having, um, social events and, Definitely. um, go places and just like. You know, have you ever hit, have you ever hit up any any um, open mics here? At least just to like like see people doing. Comedy? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I've studied this whole place. Yeah, how yeah, do you feel? I'm, how do you feel about comics here in Milwaukee? It feels like everybody's doing the same thing. Same thing so in question like, de que. In the sense of, um, it's a lot of improving here. It's a lot of improv, and then people's style of stand up is the same. I could definitely tell people are structured the same way. Like they're actually going to a class or something and someone's teaching them how to. Okay, okay, And okay. when I when I see that, I'm like, oh, okay. So, which is not nothing wrong with that. I just feel comedy needs diversity and I want to bring that, you know, and um, also bring um, females, you know, I know there's female comics out there that, you know, want to do it, but they're probably like, I had some people hit me up. And they were like, girl, I don't even know how to start that. Yeah, no, I you actually, know? I actually, um, 
I, I ran into a couple female comics um, mm -hmm. over there on Brady Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were pretty all right. Just a little a little different, you were know. Were they Latina? No, not at all. There's not one Latino there. Yeah. <laughs> that's why, so that's that's I, when I went over there, yeah. a lot of people couldn't relate to my jokes. I'm like, oh, exactly man, come on. Exactly right. So that's what... That's what I'm saying. Like, we need to diversify it. There's nothing wrong with having that comedy, but a Milwaukee is one well, type. It's, and it and it honestly, like. I've tried, I've tried, you know, talking to people on bringing, you know, comedy over here to the South Side, but it's just, it's hard because, like you said, the support, it's not, right. it's not really there. So you know I mean? I'm going to fight for it, you know. And even that's what's up, man. That's, even if it's hard, I'm going to fight for it because I really believe in it. You that's know, what I it's all about. It. It's something I love doing and... Um, even if I'm doing the show on myself, it's, that's fine, you know, but as long as people know that if you want to try, you can come down and I will guarantee you a spot. But I like to meet people prior. And hey, say, a guaranteed up? spot, guys. Yeah. Don't <laughs> miss out on this if you're funny or you think you're funny. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. We'll laugh at you. <laughs> <laughs> but if you if you do think you're funny and you think you got what it takes, man, and you're not, you're not, you, you don't get embarrassed to, you know, talk on the mic, you know what I mean, and yeah. be on stage, man. Come out, come out that day. Like I said, get to meet the comics, mm -hmm. get to meet Talitha, and um, and like she said, she'll guarantee you a spot. Absolutely. Right? If you say you want to do it, I'm gonna give it to you. So before I switch up to my other business, <laughs> I'm gonna put in a uh, last plug. Uh, Laugh for Me Productions is having their first event at Zocalo on March 6th from 9 to 11. Please pass by. You have to support this if you love comedy. If you want comedy in the South Side. This is when you come out and you support. Okay? Guys, come out and support us, man. Yes. We're going to be there. I'll be there. Yeah. Uh, I knew Baby Drew's going to be there yes, also. Absolutely. So, Drew Keyless, shout out to you. Um, and I have somebody coming from <laughs> Chicago also. So, oh, all right, all right. Come and come he's out Latino, town. too. So nice, Lewis, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, all right, so, coming, so, you know, we got a, we got already a couple a couple uh, comics yeah. out there. So I'm happy. Come I'm happy. I really come I support us, guys. I was going to be in the state by myself. So, leave that one. I was like, you know what? They coming through. That's awesome. It's going to be a good night, guys. It's going to be a great gonna night. It's going to be a lot of fun. Dancing, fun cake, picocho. I don't know where I'm going to get the cake from. But I'm going to go out. Hey, but you're smart. <laughs> 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 okay, wow. so um, my, uh, the business I started two years ago is uh, called uh, Love Your Curls Workshop. Okay. And that um, is my humanitarian push that I started because... Um, I have done uh, community work for the last, uh, I would say, 12 years in Milwaukee. And um, working with the youth taught me so many things. Mm -hmm. And um, it taught me that self-esteem is a very big lacquer in the, in the community. Like yes, we're not yes, yes. teaching our children or the schools are not teaching our children about self-esteem. So when I was out in the field actually facilitating self-esteem um, lesson plans um, and creating them, um, hair was a big deal. Hair was a very big deal. It was a, I, I made the connection in a very deep way because um, I was raised straightening my hair all the time. Okay. And um, I didn't even know that my hair got this curly. Right. Um, so and what I mean by that is when you do a lot of processing and a lot of straightening, your curl pattern changes okay. and it's not the same. Um, you continue doing that. It pretty much destroys your curl because um, you're training your hair to be different. Right. So. Um, so when I was putting all everything together, um, I had a bad experience with my hair. This is when I was when I was putting things together, piecing things okay, together, yeah. the self esteem and the hair. <clears throat> I ended up having an experience at the salon where I had to chop my hair off this short. Eesh. And it was all from chemicals. They stri she stripped my hair um, and I wanted to do an ombre to my hair. Okay, okay. And that ombre is like when it's from one like color a, to another. Yeah, like it's like you look like a chicken. I was like, why are I paying this uh, lady like so much chicken? damn money for to look like you a damn You look like chicken. a chicken before that? Before the whole... I don't know. I feel like... Uh, but... Uh, no. But... Uh, it just looked... It just didn't look good. 
All right. And so um, my hair was thin and it fell out. I went to Mexico and I went in the water and my hair didn't curl up. And I was like, oh. and that's when I knew my hair was done. Because the stripping, it, it's, it's high chemicals and it's, you know, bleaching your natural color, okay, okay, color okay. hair. Especially if you have all these And your hair these... did not curl and up. It, curl it stayed up. straight. It stayed straight. And was, was it like, like rubbery? Like It felt so crazy. It was like, it, it felt like, it's just disgusting. So, came back, I ch ended up chopping my hair off because it was just, it was so bad. Horrible. So then it made me think, like I started thinking about self-esteem. I started thinking about, you know, because I worked in the north side and the south side. Okay. So, um, when I connected hair to self-esteem, a lot of the uh, girls I worked with, they were talking about how they don't feel pretty because of their hair and... And it's mostly because their parents can't take them to get their hair done all the time. And yeah. they just want their hair to look a certain way, you know, which is straight, you know. And um, it started really, like, bothering me. And then my son, he has curly hair. And he started, one day he came to me, he was like, Mom, I want to look like Justin Bieber. Can you take me to the salon and sh get my hair straightened and then bleach it blonde? So between the self-esteem, the kids talking to me about hair... My hair got ruined. Yeah. I was like, and he, my son's trying to look like somebody else. I was like, oh, no, no, no. I got to do something about this. And I said, how can I help? I was like, how can... So I did a deep... I went in a deep dive to learn about hair. And I didn't realize that it was going to take me where I'm at right now. So I started this thing called Love Your Curls Workshop so that people could have an individual... Uh, appointment with me so that the first hour I'm teaching them teaching teaching them about um, you know like consulting them about the do's and don'ts uh, tools um, how you brush your how you brush your hair okay. uh, the products what what products you need to use um, I even make a natural hair mask at, during the um, appointment which make re revives your curls i had to figure that out it took me mm -hmm. almost so you do, two you, years so you basically you, you do hair too yeah yeah well but specifically I, it's, it's curls specific, specifically for curly natural right. hair so the second hour <laughs> of the love your curls workshop i'm actually doing my client's hair okay. so it's again all for natural curly hair um so first hour consulting second hour showing you what I was teaching you the first hour and so that I can empower you to do your own hair in between your hair appointments so I teach them two styles so that they can learn how to do it um, on their own and then post the workshop um, I give them a hair regimen to go over the things that we went over and it's been working and then um, if uh, a mom and daughter come in okay. I do a adolescent self-esteem activity with the girl so mm -hmm. that she understands like how hair is connected. Okay, okay. That, yeah, else. that's pretty yeah. cool. That's pretty yeah. cool, man. So that's, I, that's something different. Yeah. So I created it from scratch so that I can feel a need of, because everybody always coming up to me like, what do you do to your hair? What do you do to your hair? What do you do to your hair? Because me and my son, we went on a natural hair journey. And okay. so when He also I, has the curls? Yes. Uh, so when he told me about Justin Bieber, I was like, oh, hell no. No, I, we got to stop this. I used to have curls. Mm, now, yeah. I, now I have no hair. Um, but, oh, you want my hair mask? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. I did, man, I did a relaxer. I did it because I wanted right. Justin Bieber hair too. <laughs> So I understand where he's coming right. from. Man, and it fucked my shit up, homie. Yeah. Like, bro, like, dude, like, man. So I had to do a lot of studying on, like, how our hair works. And I know I can work with any type. Mm -hmm. Two, three, four. Um, there's different levels of hair types. So we go over all the five stats of this person's hair so that they can really understand it. Um, there's a science behind everything. And since I've learned the science behind it, that's what makes me be able to work with anyone's hair. Because I can tell by looking at it, like, what it means. Yeah, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, so it's really cool. I have a lot of fun doing it. Um, and it's personal, you know. But you've met, like, a lot of interesting people. Yeah, I've met also, a lot of right? interesting people. And, um, yeah, I just love that part of my life right now. So between that, 
Laugh With Me Productions and Love Your Curls Workshop. I've just been all over the city just like trying to, you know, promote. And you basically do this all on your own. You don't have a partner. You don't have nobody that's with you doing that. That's all on your and own. And I have a full-time job, but I, that's about to change. High five. <laughs> well, I'm high five to the full-time guy doing three things. Not the, it's about to change. Part. <laughs> Giving her all this credit. <laughs> nah, nah, high, man, no, but, high five, yeah, high but, five. Um, yeah, the full-time job is becoming too much. So yeah, sometimes trying you to, that, yeah. Yeah, if you want right? to push, you want to push, you have to allow yourself to have more time to do those well, things. Well, yeah, if you so, want to dedicate more time to the things that you really believe want, in yeah. and, and your dreams, then yeah. honestly, sometimes we got to make sacrifices. Because like I always yeah. say, life is about making mm -hmm. sacrifices and taking risks. Yep, yeah, and that's where I'm at right now. So, so I'm happy with my sacrifice. Yeah, that, definitely, um, definitely. Um, Actually, they'll start next week. Definitely. Part yeah. time. That's, that's, that's cool. So, yes, yeah, so I can have more time to do other things. But, yeah, if you are interested, if you have someone that's uh, an adolescent or you have curly hair, please um, follow my page on Facebook. It's Love Your Curls Workshop. And then the other page I have is Laugh With Me Productions. So, that's all I got for you today. All right. Man, thank you. Yeah. Highly appreciate you thank coming you out, so you know, much. and sharing those, uh, those stories and, uh, you know, about your... Uh, Laugh out, laugh, laugh out loud, laugh with, laugh with, me. with me, laugh with me, yeah. productions, yeah. and the Love Your Curls, right? Yes, Love that's, Your Curls workshop. Yes. That's awesome, that's awesome. So you guys know where to find her already on Facebook and on, on Instagram, can they find you on Instagram too? Yeah, Laugh With Me Productions. Laugh With Me Productions on Instagram. Same right? thing. <laughs> thank you guys, thank you guys very much, thank you for tuning in. Hey, right, remember guys, stay tuned, we're going to be at Socalo on March 6th from 9 to 11. Yes. Uh, 9 to 11, and then afterwards we're going to party and get some cake. All right, guys. <laughs> get your tickets. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Thank this you. has been the seventh episode of A Dreamer's Life Podcast. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs>